Hello everyone and welcome to Off-Road Adventures. Today we have a product highlight for you. These are the No Sight Off-Road Pod Lights. They, uh, they mount in the, just in front of the windshield on either side of your vehicle uh, and they're supposed to be ditch lights. So it'll illuminate the ditches and a little bit in front of your vehicle as you're driving at night. Uh, and these are for off-road use only. You're not supposed to use these on the road. Um, but regardless, there are different options that you can get of these lights. So there's some American ones and these ones I believe are from China. So we're gonna make sure that they can actually make the trip. First of all, you know, I mean, stuff from China, it gets beat up quite a bit, so. <laughs> eh, a little damage on the box, but we'll see the contents inside after, uh, I mean, what if she falls off the boat? I should probably get that. Hmm. Hope they're waterproof. All right, now that we fished this out of the creek here, uh, let's see how it handled the abuse. Let's open this box up. We'll check out our contents. We'll make sure everything's there. We'll make sure everything's still in one piece. And uh, hopefully it'll still work on the truck. Come on in, let's take a look at what's inside. So initially you can see, we've kind of beat the box up a little bit. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's gotten pretty soaked. So let's try to open it up. And the sleeve is not coming off. So you know what, let's go ahead and peel it. got an instruction manual and looks like they laminated it nicely so it's uh it's actually still legible oh <laughs> still able to read it that's good so that box so we got some stones and stuff from the river what's in this oh we got some cables all right so this looks pretty daunting right now but it shouldn't be a very complicated circuit at all uh, we'll have the installation soon here to show you but uh, there should be something as simple as a relay. Yeah. Uh, positive, negative on the battery terminals. Looks like a couple connectors and a switch. So we'll wire that up in a little bit here. Let's see what else is in the box. Some foam. Oh, our lights. Here we go. These are actually pretty cool looking. Check that out. A little bit of water on them, but if they can't handle the water, they shouldn't be on my channel. You guys know what I'm talking about. Another one. Beautiful. Very good craftsmanship, actually. And then uh, a couple of boxes here. Like the accessories, probably the mounting brackets or something. Oh, that's neat. We've got amber color covers as well. So uh, if you wanted these uh, maybe during the fog or uh, uh, just wanted a little bit less uh, blinding if you're following people on the trail it's a good option to have Ooh, these are all wet but we're looking at uh, mounting brackets also pretty cool looking so theoretically they should just uh, mount up bolt it together and mount on the hood what else we got some more hardware and I assume the same things in this box as well for the other side yep so I think we got everything we need here. All right, now that we've made a little bit of a mess here, we're gonna clean it up and uh, let's get these on the truck. We'll see you guys back at the shop. All right, now that we're back at the shop, step one is just to lay everything out. Do everything else so you can see exactly what you're working with. As you can see, once the cables are all laid out, it's a lot less daunting. So, long story short, we have a positive, we have a negative, that attaches to the battery, a relay, a switch that we have to run into the cabin, and then the two connectors that attach directly to the pod lights. So, really, not too bad at all. One thing I've noticed that I didn't really like about the no sight mounting brackets was that they're universal. So on the FJ Cruiser, I wanted to put them right here, and I'm still going to, uh, but they're going to be at a different angle just how the, the way it's designed. So instead of being level, which I'll probably end up getting leveling brackets in the future, 
they're just going to be bolted right to the blade right there. So we'll see how they look when they're done, but it should still be pretty cool. All right, so step one is to take these panels off. Now, the clips underneath are old and brittle and have had years of really hard abuse just from me alone. Now, I've broken every single one under this panel. I'm gonna need to get new ones from Toyota. But in theory, you're supposed to be able to just finesse it off with a nylon pry tool. So, start down here and then out the top like that. I hope you have better luck than I do. Because we're drilling into these panels, you want to mark ahead of time, make sure you know exactly where it's going to fit in. Uh, I'm doing it on this side first because there's an antenna there. Um, I don't want to interfere with the antenna, and I want to kind of a little bit forward and out of the way. So this is where we're going to start. Because we just drilled through the body of this vehicle, going to be some exposed metal where there was paint. I don't really want that to rust, especially the way I treat this truck, so I'm just going to lay a little bit of touch-up paint on any sort of exposed metal. That way, it'll be sealed, just like the rest of the truck. As we're waiting for that to dry, I just actually noticed something about these brackets I like. Um, I've got these raised little notches there, so the bolt eventually sits down nicely and that'll help prevent it from turning when you're tightening it down from the back. So I'm going to go bolt, washer, body panel, locking washer on the bottom, followed by the nut. Hopefully, I'll just be able to spin the nut on. I'm going to hold it, so I don't have to worry too much about it. Alright, now the paint's set up. We are mounting this just like I had said with the bolt mounting bracket. Slip washer, locking washer, nut, and uh, make sure this is oriented towards the front of the vehicle. And that the edge of this is parallel to the edge of the truck, so it'll be nice and straight. Let's talk wire routing for a minute here. Uh, a lot of times you could drill another hole. Uh, I don't really feel like doing that though, so I'm gonna mount these up onto the, onto the unit here, put the screws in the sides, and then kind of pinch this wire between the two panels as I install it. So that's the point. All right, so because I took the time to really line them up and match them on both sides, this is probably the hardest part on the wiring. Yourself some trouble and spray anything you're shoving through these grommets with some silicone before you shove them through. Makes life so much easier. So once you have it pierced through, connector pulls through the grommet, all we're going to have to do is plug it into the uh, piece that it came with uh, that has our switch on it. In this case, it's got a little sticker on the back, so double-sided tape is perfect. There's nothing really going on here, there's no screws, there's no other connections, it's right next to my hood release, and my other button for some lights. So I'm going to stick it right there. Alright, now we have everything tucked away, so we've got cable ties keeping the main harness up. Uh, and then this is tucked and attached to the other harness I have in there. And uh, you don't want it touching anything that moves, be it your feet or either pedals or even the steering column underneath going to your steering wheel. Make sure it's away from every single moving part. Then when you're done and you're confident about it, you hardly notice there. All right, so again, pretty simple enough. Uh, positive, negative, switch shoved down in through that grommet there. Uh, butyl tape applied so that no water gets in. 
have a bunch of excess wiring on the harness. So in the next day or two, I'm probably just gonna go snip, snip, solder, solder, and get rid of some of that. And then uh, make sure all my zip tie and uh, wire harness work is nice and tucked. Uh, very important to keep it away from moving parts out here too, just like under the dash. And now all we gotta do is make sure that they work. If you care to aim these things, now's as good a time as any. Make sure you're all lined up and you're good to go. These pod lights are so wicked bright. Check these things out. If they can't handle the water, they shouldn't be on my truck. All right, well, thanks for sticking through the video. As you can see, they're still working. Uh, they've taken a beating, they've gone swimming, they've gotten drenched. Uh, these things are great. They're so bright. They're brighter than my high beams times like five. Uh, if you guys are interested in these, there's gonna be a link in my description. Uh, you'll get 25% off if you use my discount code. So enjoy it. Uh, I love them, gonna keep them on. See you guys next time on Off-Road Adventures.